In the first part of this lecture, we discussed uh, Ampere's law and uh, its application to two simple problems. We'll continue in this second part to discuss further applications. So here we consider the case of a coaxial cable. We have an inner conductor. This is the one here, this one here, and we have an outer conductor. The inner conductor is circular. It has a cross-section radius of A, while the outer conductor has a thickness of C minus B. Uh, you can see B is the inner con inner inner uh, the radius here, and C is the outer radius. We have a current flowing out from the page in the inner conductor, and we have the current is going through the load, and then it's coming back into the page through the inner conductor. That's how we close the circuit in a, in a coaxial cable, right? Um, from the way the current is structured, we can simply say from the high degree of symmetry that the magnetic field will be in the phi direction. Okay, it will be in the phi direction, and it will only depend on rho. It will uh, increase or decrease with rho. So by doing that, we can uh, apply Ampere's law. Uh, we can first apply, take an Ampere's um, path or Ampere's uh, contour, Amperian contour like a circle for the inner conductor. So inside the inner conductor, this is exactly the case that we had before for the thick conductor case. We just discussed that. And uh, if you apply, say, that H multiplied by 2 by rho is equal to the current enclosed, which is equal to J multiplied by by rho squared, and then you replace J by I over by A squared. So we assume here that the current is uniform. If you do that, you obtain this expression here for the magnetic field, and this tells us that the magnetic field increases linearly with the radius inside the inner conductor. We already discussed something the same expression for the case of uh, a thick conductor. Now, once you go outside this conductor, uh, you'll see that the magnetic field still will be in the phi direction, but the current enclosed does not depend on rho. So between radius of A and B, inside this area, if you draw any amperium, amperium path, you see that the current current enclosed does not depend on the contour and in that case uh, h will be equal to i over 2 by rho uh, so this is for this area between or for this for the region between a and b so this is the second region to consider inside between the wire and the shield the rho between a and b the current does not depend on the radius of the wire it is i then the integral of Ampere's law will give us h phi multiplied by 2 by rho will give us i. So this is a car, this is a magnetic field here. Now, when we try to consider um, a contour inside the shield, this is the inner conductor. This is the inner uh, radius of the shield. This is the outer radius of the shield. Okay, and now uh, you draw a contour which is really somewhere in between, uh, somewhere inside the shield like this one here you notice something that there is a current flowing out from the beach, okay, and there is a current flowing into the beach. So, and now, when you start to have this contour here, this contour will enclose two currents. The current flowing out from the beach, which is positive, because of the assumed direction of the contour, if you remember, and from the previous slide, we assumed it to be in this direction. So this means that the positive direction of the current is going out from the beach. While the current going through the shield is going into the beach, so it's considered a negative current. So the total current now enclosed is equal to I minus the current flowing in this area. What is the current flowing in this area? It is the, it is the cross-sectional area multiplied by the current density. So and this is what we have here. We simply apply Ampere's law. We see that the integral of H dot dl, which is H phi multiplied by 2 by rho, is equal to the total current enclosed. What is the total current enclosed inside this Amperian path here? It is a current throwing, flowing through the inner conductor, which is a positive current. It has a value of I. And the current uh, flowing through the output conductor, which is negative. But what is the value of this current? It is J, the current density, multiplied by this area. What is this area? It is the area by f f between radius B, and radius rho. So it is by rho squared minus b squared. Of course, the current density in this case, j, is nothing but the current, but i divided by this whole area here, the area of the shield, which is by c squared minus b squared, as shown here. So this is j. 
it's i over by c squared minus b squared so again we assume that the current there is a current i flowing uniformly inside the inner conductor and there is a current minus i flowing uniformly inside the shield so it's a current density is equal to i divided by the surface area of the shield which is by c squared minus b squared so if we simplify all this together we see that inside the shield the current is still decreasing but it decreases as a function of rho squared and the when rho is equal to c so when you reach this point here the total current encloses zero because if you have any any amberian contour outside the shield or just outside the surface it encloses two current a current i which is positive flowing out from the page and the current minus i which is negative flowing into the page so the total current encloses zero and in that case there is no magnetic field outside the coaxial cable so a coaxial cable is really well shielded it does not allow any current to exist outside because the total current enclosed any magnetic field to exist outside because the total current encloses zero a current i flows from out in a positive direction in the inner conductor and the current i flows in the negative direction in the opposite direction in the shield so if you plot the magnetic field inside this uh, coaxial cable you could see it is zero in the center of the uh, of the of the inner conductor because there is no current enclosed and when you increase from uh, zero up to a which is the radius of the inner conductor the magnetic field will increase linearly with the radius and then once you start to go outside between the inner conductor and the shield in this area between a and b you will see the magnetic field will decay as one over rho and then once you try to see the magnetic field inside the shield itself it decays as uh, as uh, with rho squared not with one over rho with rho squared so it has a minus rho squared term and it, a magnetic field reaches zero exactly on the surface of the of the uh, external uh, shield so and outside of course there is no magnetic field because the total enclosed uh, current is equal to zero so this is how the coaxial cable looks like and it's a, it's an extension of the thick conductor case that we discussed earlier. Another interesting application to Ampere's law is to calculate the uh, magnetic field resulting from uh, an infinite uh, sheet of current. So here we have an infinite sheet of current. It is in the xy plane. The current is flowing in the y direction and it is a, it's a surface current. It's flowing on the surface. And the unit of this current is ampere per meter. So, and uh, why you call it ampere per meter? Because if you want to calculate how much current uh, is flowing in one meter, you, you go normal to the current. So, in one meter, you see that you have a current of K flowing here. Here you get a current of K, K amperes. So, the current in every one meter, there's a current of K amperes flowing. So, the current here, we say it's uh, KY, AY, so it's K in the Y, in the y direction. And we would like to calculate um, the magnetic field resulting from this current. Now, there are, uh, one thing to notice here, if I, if I take a look at this uh, diagram from this side, so I will come, uh, maybe you can try to draw that. If I come from here, take a look at this diagram, I will see that the current is flowing out from the beach. Okay, so the current will be flowing out from the beach. I will see the Z axis, I will see the X axis. So here I will consider only two current, uh, very thin uh, currents flowing here. So the currents flowing in the y direction. So again, you can see it's, it's, it's pointing out from the page because y is pointing out from the page. The current and each one of these lines, I will what I will do here, I will simply consider uh, a very thin sheet here, very thin sheet here, and I will consider it like an infinite, uh, an infinite conductor carrying a current of k. And I will consider another sheet on the opposite side of the z-axis, and it's flowing in this direction. Okay, and then I try to take a look. This one is is pointing out from the page. This one is pointing out from the page. And when I took a look at them, I see something like this. These are these are these two currents. They are at the same distance from the z-axis. This one here looks like an infinite uh, wire. So it creates a magnetic field going in this direction. And remember, it's pointing out from the beach. So the, the, uh, the, the rule does apply. This is a magnetic field. It's normal uh, to, the, to the current, which is pointing angle from the beach. And it's pointing to R, uh, the line connecting any point along the wire to the observation point. 
if I take a look at the, uh, the magnetic field resulting from this one you'll see that um, this magnetic field resulting from this wire here is in this direction you see it's this direction is normal to R the point the vector connecting any point along the wire and the observation point and the direction of the wire now these two vectors DH1 and DH2 the ob obviously they cancel each other out in the z direction because you can decompose them each one of them into a z component this one will give you a z component this one will give you a z component they cancel each other out along the z component and they add to each other here along the x and the same thing will happen here but they add to each other along the minus x so uh, we could see that the, f the magnetic field will have only an x component this is very important finding of this symmetry. It will have only an X component, and the magnetic field will get weaker. It should get weaker as we move away from Z. We expect as we move away from the sources that the magnetic field becomes weaker, except when the sources are infinite. Sometimes the magnetic field does not change, as we have seen in the case of an infinite charged plane in electrostatics. But by, by making this assumption, we can move we can use the shown Amberian service. So this Amberian service is shown here, it has uh, four segments. So these two segments are along Z. This is along Z, this is along minus Z. And this segment here is along the negative X. This segment is along positive X. And uh, they have a length here, uh, which is shown. Of course, the magnetic field by assumption, uh, and we have seen that the magnetic field does not have a Z component. So the integral of h dot dl along this segment, which is along z axis, and this one, which along minus z axis, will give us zero. So we're going to take this one as the Amberian path. This Amberian path clo crosses the plane, crosses the plane. So the plane intersected in the middle. And so h dot dl over this contour give us zero here, give us zero here. You have only h dot dl along a negative x and h dot dl along a positive x. Okay, and this will give us a current enclosed, and if you try, maybe I can try to draw for you this Amberian bath here. This is how things will look like. Uh, it looks something like this here. And this is how the sheet is, is looking, so the, the sheet will look like this. So the current enclosed, if, if this the length here is h, is equal to h multiplied by k. And k is the linear, is the current density of that sheet. So now we apply Ampere's law and see what we can do. And notice that there is an anti-symmetry. Uh, the magnetic field here uh, above the plate, above this infinite sheet, is in the z x direction. And below it in the negative x direction, and they have the same value. If this is this was uh, 3 Ampere per meter, this is minus 3 Ampere per meter. Just the opposite direction. The same magnitude, but opposite direction. There is anti-symmetry here in this case. So we apply Ampere's law, the integral of h dot dl is equal to the current enclosed. We have seen the Amberian path that we selected. It has um, two segments along x and two segments along z. The two segments along z will give us zero because there is no magnetic field along z. Um, in the top part, the magnetic field is in the x direction. So here uh, you multiply this by the length. If you take a length small enough, then the magnetic field does not change. So h h x one multiplied by l. In the in the lower bar, the magnetic field is in the uh, opposite direction. So this will give us this um, negative sign. Remember, we talked about anti symmetry. Uh, one of them will give you h h x. The other one will give you minus h x. So anyway, so uh, we end up with this one here, and the current enclosed is equal to the length of the contour multiplied by k y, as I explained earlier. So l will cancel out where l is the length of that contour and you end up with something very interesting you end up with the fact that um, uh, above this uh, sheet you have a certain you have magnetic field hx1 below it you have a magnetic field hx2 and the difference between them is equal to the current density is equal to the current density here in this case okay um, now and because of anti-symmetry that we uh, talked about earlier hx2 is equal to negative hx1 so if we make this substitution here uh, this becomes 2 hx1 is equal to ky or that hx1 is ky over 2 and hx2 is the negative of that so now this is a situation that we have we have an infinite uh, wire 
uh, infinite sheet it's scanning a current and here y is f is shown into the page going into the page um, and above it there is a magnetic field h1 in the x direction below it there is a magnetic field h2 in the negative x direction there is anti-symmetry these two fields are the same along as the same distance um, and uh, if you notice here uh, that the field the result that we got does not depend on h on the uh, on the height of from the from the uh, from the uh, from that sheet so the magnetic field is pretty much uniform it does not change it's either on top is pointing in the x direction below is pointing in negative x direction how do you know that this answer is correct or wrong well there is a, a very simple way to do that if you, this sheet of course is extending in an infinite way but if it wasn't extending in an infinite way then these magnetic field lines will close so uh, this one here will close as well and you obtain closed magnetic field lines and uh, if you see the right hand rule does apply beautifully the, the circulation of the magnetic field encloses the current flowing which is this current here according to the right hand rule so this confirms that our calculation for this case is fine so for the problem we have seen we have seen if the magnetic field is flowing uh, if, this, if the current is flowing in the y direction so we have ky ay then up and the sheet is in the xy plane and the sheet is in the xy plane then above the above that plane for z greater than zero the magnetic field is positive it's pointing in the x direction and its magnitude is 0.5 ky below that plane the magnetic field is negative and it's it's uh, it's it's really uh, or it can consider as positive but it's a negative x direction so in that case we can see uh, that the magnetic field has anti-symmetry in general in general if you solve a problem like this one what you will have to do you have to um, you have to take into account uh, the normal so if this is your sheet it's flowing like this okay it's whatever in into the page or out from the page there's some current flowing into that sheet this is the point where you want to calculate the the field then you calculate n n is the normal pointing from the plane unit normal pointing from the plane uh, to the observation point b and in that case the general rule is that h will be equal to one half k cross a n so k is the direction of the current a n is the direction of the normal to the plane so here k and a n is you can see k is going into the page in this diagram a n is normal so k cross a n will give you a vector pointing in this direction for the, for the point B, if the point B is below that plane, you can see this will be a n, and in that case, k cross n k is going into the page a n is pointing downward. Then k cross a n will give you a field in this direction. So you can really tell the direction of the of the magnetic field by knowing a n and by knowing k. let's consider an example on the case of an infinite current sheet consider an infinite current sheet that has a current density of uh, 3ax minus 4ay ampere per meter and it's flowing in the y equal to zero plane would like to find the magnetic field h at the point zero minus one and zero so here this is a general case we have a, a point uh, a plane k we have a, a point b and would like to determine the magnetic field at the point b because it's an infinite sheet the magnetic field will not depend on the distance from this plane it will be independent from this distance but the field here is not on the x y plane it's in the y equal to zero plane and as i recommended for you earlier you should start by drawing a diagram so here this is the um, uh, the yz plane here so i'm showing you the yz plane this is the yz plane okay or the y equal to zero plane and the magnetic field is flowing in this direction and why i'm showing it this way because it has a positive x component has a negative z component this sorry this is not the magnetic field sorry this is a current this is a current sheet this is a current flowing into that sheet in that sheet so k the current k is flow is flowing in this direction it has a positive x component and the negative z component now p is on the other side from the x z plane so it has a negative y in that case the unit normal 
If I try to draw a unit normal in the direction of B, this unit normal will be in the negative Y direction. So it's not a positive Y is this way, it's B in the negative Y. So now what is A and to use in the expression and K is given. Then we apply the rule that the, uh, the magnetic field will be at B will be equal to one half K cross A N, where A N is a, a N is a unit normal uh, pointing from that infinite sheet towards the observation point, which is B here in this case. So we ab apply this rule, so one half K cross A N, K is given, we know that A N is minus E Y, A X cross E Y gives us A Z, but there is a negative sign, so you get minus A Z, so minus 3 over 2 A Z, and then A Z cross E Y will give you minus A X, uh, there is a minus, there is a minus, there is another minus, so it becomes minus 2 A X, you have 4, divided by 2 so it becomes 2 so this is the direction of the magnetic field at the point B it is minus 2 AX minus 1 and a half AZ and if you try to take a look if you go back to the previous diagram and take a look at the uh, at the, uh, the direction of the magnetic field and the direction of the current sheet you will see indeed that the magnetic field at the point B or even an, at another point opposite to B along the Y axis they satisfy the right hand rule. You do circulate, uh, they create a loop in infinity. Of course, this loop closes infinity, closes infinity around this sheet of current. The last application of Ambe on Ambert's uh, law that I want to give you is the case of a toroid, and toroids are used very often in magnetic circuits, in relays, uh, in sensors, and so on. Um, how did you create them? You, you have some uh, core. Uh, later we'll discuss cores with different permeability, uh, but for now we'll assume that um, uh, we just have a core here, um, a core of some sort, and you create a number of turns around it, large number of turns, and I uh, would like to calculate the magnetic field inside this, this, uh, this uh, toroid. Because of the symmetry of the problem, we expect that the magnetic field will be in the phi direction, and it will only depend on rho as well because the magnetic field surrounds the current. Uh, so if you apply Ampere's law, the integral of h dot dl is equal to i enclosed, you select an Amberian bath like this one. Of course, if you select an Amberian bath inside, inside the inner radius, there is no current enclosed here, so that there is no magnetic field inside. So here there is no magnetic field. Magnetic field is zero. You start to get the magnetic field just inside this volume here. So in that case, uh, because h is, a, is, is in the phi direction, it's only a function of rho, you can simply apply the integral of h dl gives you h phi multiplied by 2 by rho. This equal to the current enclosed. What is the current enclosed? Remember that every turn will cross the surface once here with a current i. And you have n of these turns. So actually, in this case, you have you ha the current enclosed is equal to n i. So this has to be extremely clear in your minds. I drew an Amberian bath, okay, and there is a current f i flowing here into the beach. Say, another current i flowing here into the beach, another current i flowing here into the beach, and so on. The number of currents flowing into the beach is equal to the number of turns. This is why the total current enclosed is equal to n i. And uh, in that case, you can see that the magnetic field is equal to Ni over 2 by rho. It gets weaker as you move from the inner radius to the outer radius. And then, if you try to plot the magnetic field, see the magnetic field outside, if you draw an Amperian bath, which is something like this one, the answer will be zero. The total current enclosed will be zero. Why? Because in that case, every turn will contribute a current flowing out and then another current flowing in every turn will give you a car uh, every turn every one loop will give you a current flowing out so the current flows out here from this point and then flows in here flows and the second loop flows out from here flows in here so you have n turns you have n positive currents you have n negative currents they do cancel out and the, the magnetic field inside the toroid is equal to zero, which is, which is a very interesting finding. There is no magnetic field outside the toroid. The magnetic field is only inside the volume surrounded by these turns. 
and there is no also magnetic field inside this uh, inner radius. It's just in between the volume between the, the inner radius and the outer radius of the toroid. I thought that showing this figure would be very interesting. Uh, this is uh, this figure shows how iron dust aligns itself inside the toroid, and the iron dust gets gets magnetized and it aligns itself along along magnetic field lines. So you can see it's drawing lines along the phi direction. This is an actual uh, toroid, and outside there is no effect whatsoever on the uh, on the on this iron dust. And inside there is no effect, they didn't align themselves. They align themselves only inside the toroid where the current is flowing. And you can see the, current, the, the magnetic field is indeed is in the phi direction as predicted. Let's consider an example here on the case of a toroid. We have a toroid which has 850 loops of wire. And it carries a current I uh, equal to 10 amperes. So N is equal to 850, I is equal to 10 amperes. Inner radius of the toroid is 25 centimeters, the outer radius is 27 centimeters. We would like to calculate the field strength at 26 centimeters, so exactly in the middle of the volume of the toroid and outside rho equal to 40 centimeters. We apply the expression that we derived earlier, the magnetic field inside the volume of the toroid between the inner radius and the outer radius is Ni over 2 by rho in the phi direction. And this is between row 1 and row 2. So we substitute number of turns 850. The current is I is 10. Uh, 2 by the radius is 26 centimeters, so 0.26. You get a magnetic field of 5,203 ampere per meter. Of course, if you try to get the magnetic field outside for row greater than 27, you get a zero. Because as we agreed, uh, if there is a current flowing out here, this current will flow from the same turn in here. So you get a current I and a current minus I, and you have N turns, so you have N positive currents and N negative currents, and they do cancel out. Then the integral of H dot dL for any service outside, outside the toroid will give you zero because there is no current enclosed, and then the magnetic field is equal to zero.